Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is Rob from R&B Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing two films uh, with an Irish theme. One is a fictional fantasy film, and the other is a documentary. Now, the fictional film is the Disney 1959 film Darby O'Gill and the Little People. And the film is about a caretaker named Darby O'Gill and his friendly rivalry between him and King Brian of the Leprechauns. Now, Darby is always looking for a way to trick uh, the, uh, the Leprechaun into giving him a crock of gold, but only to be tricked himself by that sly Leprechaun. Now, one day, Darby's uh, employer decides that he's going to retire him and bring in a younger caretaker named Michael McBride, played by a pre-James Bond, Sean Connery. So Darby hides this from his daughter, Katie, and in hopes that he'll be able to find the leprechaun and make him give him some wishes in order to ease the situation out. Now, I think Darby O'Gill has some of the best photography that I have seen uh, for, in, in any of Disney's live-action films. Uh, the picture is very vibrant and very colorful, especially uh, giving the streets and the buildings a very nice look and giving the impression of being in a different place at a different time. Now, it was also interesting to see how the special effects were done here, as considering that they didn't have computers. And interestingly, I thought everything looked, it didn't look fake to me compared to some of the CGI movies that we got today where you can always see that there's something that you can tell is computer generated. But what made the film a little bit difficult for me was some of the actors' thick accents. Almost all the whole cast was imported from Ireland and the UK and some I found myself sometimes uh, turning on the closed captioning in order to hear what they were saying. But I thought Darby O'Gill was a charming, fun film. And also, after I saw this film, I went online to look at some of the other comments uh, that people had about the film. And some of them said that the film stereotypes Irish people and um, thinking that they all live in thatched cottages and that they all believe in leprechauns. But I think this movie is supposed to be, is not supposed to be set in the 1950s or even today for that matter. I think it's supposed to be set way in the past, um, maybe like the early 20th century, late 19th century, somewhere along there. And what I found interesting um, I hate to bring the stereotype up, but there, are, but so, in the past, like in movies and TV shows, sometimes Irish people are stereotypes as drunks. But here, nobody's really a drunk. Whenever they go to the pub to hear Darby O'Gill tell his stories, whether they believe they happened to him or not, they're there just to be sociable. So I definitely recommend checking the film out. All right, now my second review is about a is a documentary from about my favorite Irish folk group. It's called The Story of the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem. And it's from 1984, and my mom had their records, and every St. Patrick's Day she would always bring them out and she would play them, and, they were all, and it was really great, you know, to hear them. They're, they're this group from the 1960s that had their lively renditions of some Irish folk music, and uh, they introduced that to the American folk scene at the time, but they broke up in the late 60s, and this film mixes their reunion concerts from 1984 with some intimate interviews about their fame and their fights, as well as interviews with some of their contemporaries uh, from that time. Now, it also has footage of them visiting their hometowns in Ireland and taking the viewers through their childhood, including uh, when the Clancy's visit an old castle that they used to play around in at the time when they were kids. And it was nice to see uh, also see their first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show, like the footage from it, you know, to, to see what propelled them in their thing. And uh, what made these interviews feel intimate was that they were often interviewed by places uh, went from when they were starting out, like the folk clubs, and I thought that that kind of made it a nice touch to it. But there were times I felt that there was too much cutting between the interviews to them performing songs. Like they would go from an interview to them performing a song somewhere, back to an interview, and then they'd go to a completely different song. And it would just feel kind of choppy, in my opinion. But I think anyone that's interested in the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem or, you know, that I've never even heard of them, I think this documentary is a good place to start. And I also recommend checking, going on iTunes and trying to find their music or going out and looking for their CDs because I think they're really good. Unfortunately, Tom and Pat Clancy and Tommy Makem have passed away since, but Liam Clancy, thankfully, is still with us. Okay, that's my review on um, Darby O'Gill and the Little People and the documentary The Story of the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem, so feel free to leave any comments about either of the movies or any of that or comment about the review, and uh, we'll see you next time.